So pond-based ice rescue overview alternatives. Um, and this is gonna work well for uh, departments where you've got staggered response and your initial arriving companies may not have the full rescue arsenal, but they should have throw bags, uh, they should have some reaching uh, capabilities and hopefully just a small handful of carabiners. Um, there are a million ways to do this, but what we're gonna focus on today is that early arriving company's ability to set up um, a working line to gain access to the victim once you get a craft here well, with a group of rescuers. Initial arriving companies are gonna build this and the only thing they're gonna use is throw bags and carabiners, okay? So while well, one person on the team uh, identifies the victim, gets up, starts doing their self-rescue coaching, throwing and reaching, if you got two other guys or even one other guy, he is gonna try and identify two anchor points that if you shot a beeline from anchor point to anchor point, that line you create is gonna be within um, a width or a span of the hole equivalent to the craft that you're gonna bring. So whether you're bringing a rescue sled or a Tatinga Rick craft or, or just a standard inflatable, whatever your platform is, uh, make sure that if it pivots sideways on the line, you can reach the hole or, or get very, very close to the hole. The other reason we're focusing on this with a craft-based support is too many times we train on the ice where we go out and, and we cut holes through the ice with chainsaws and we've got six, eight, uh, 12 inches of ice. The only time we're gonna be realistically doing ice rescue in those applications is when someone has errantly fallen into a previously disturbed segment, whether it's an ice hole or whatever's been created or a vehicle goes through the ice. In most of our true ice rescues, at least around here, um, we're going to have kids or people that are out on the ice, and the ice has degraded and it's gotten thin. So once they've broken through, our concept of I'm just going to blow across there in a go rescue mode and get to the victim isn't realistic because we're going to be breaking through the ice our entire way out there. So we need to be craft focused, something that's going to keep us on the surface and move quickly. So <clears throat> we're just as a two-man team. Craig and I are going to work on this. Uh, I'm going to take the end of my throw line and I'm going to establish an anchor on one tree. Now, if you have a handful of carabiners on you, you can do any kind of anchor you want over here. You can do a clove hitch with an overhand safety. You could do a hasty high strength, uh, high strength tie off or tensionless wrap. That would be your optimal. But if you don't have a carabiner, you don't want to do a tie in. Doesn't matter. Just create a suitable anchor. Remember, we're not going off cliffs with this. This isn't a true life safety line. We're just creating a tension line that we don't want to slip. So I'm going to work over towards this tree. I am going to go ahead and put a high strength tie off on this one. So I'm going to create some quick coils. I'm going to hold my rope there and I'm going to start wrapping. Remember, minimum of three wraps. Number of coils are going to increase based on the diameter of the anchor. Okay, I'm a little short there. I'm not going high. I, this isn't high line application, this is life safety. So I'm not gonna get cuckoo about how clean or neatly this is rigged. I just want it to be organized appropriately and reliable. Throw my carabiner in, clip it right back onto my throw line. And then I want to extend throw lines to my opposing anchor. So just as an example for this, we're just gonna identify a, a, a tree relatively across the way, but we'd shoot all the way across the section. You could run guys around the rim, uh, advancing the line, or if you've just got an arborist bag with a messenger line, you could send that, attach in your lines and get it ferried across and then anchor it in on the other side. Um, you could also just throw to another guy over there. Remember, you're gonna need multiple throw bags because your distance or your span is probably gonna be greater than the length of your throw bag. Um, but obviously we don't want to turn this into line of Palooza. So if your length is too long, then you need to start thinking about other applications. This is a pond based, you know, not super long shot. All right, so we're gonna walk. Greg, you wanna grab a few more throw bags?
right, so I'm coming to the end of my bag here. When I get to the end of my bag, I don't care if there's clumps, lumps, knots, inter inter interferences within this line, okay? I'm not riding a pulley on it. I'm not doing anything else like that. So if your connection points on the end of your bags are reliable connections, then use it. Just extend this bag, take your next bag, and connect it into this one. Um, if it's not, then you just want to create a hasty knot, okay? So we've got workable loops. I've got connectors on me. So we're just going to go ahead and connect up. Okay, so we're connected there. And then we're going to continue to work. Dev, go ahead and bring one more throw bag just in case you need it. Now obviously, we wouldn't be directing this straight across the ice like we're doing now. We'd be working the rim. Um, and then once we get into position, we tension it into where we want to get it organized. That front one's right all right we need one more connection here we'll go ahead and do a tie-in on this one so we're gonna take the end of our rope we're gonna come on through um, this could be a, an eight follow through this could be the connection with two half hitches okay there's one and there's two there's like two half hitches we're extend back. And then as we approach this other anchor, we're going to create a voodoo hitch uh, with basically a, a mimicked anchor strap. So coming up on this end with the throw bag, we're just going to drop the throw bag. We're going to get to the tail, which is the bag right there. And we're going to turn this into basically an anchor strap. Okay. So I think about the distance and I'm going to come around that tree. I'm going to create a midline knot on the other side. So real quick, there's just a figure eight on a bike. I'm gonna pass this guy around. And this is basically my anchor strap, okay? I'm gonna take my carabiner. I connect the carabiner in there. Now before I go any further, I'm gonna take this tail of the rope. And I'm gonna bring it right through that carabiner. All right, now, I want to pull all this tight, so I get all this slack on. You see, I'm I'm basically using that carabiner kind of like a pulley. Okay. Now, once I've got this guy relatively tight, this is the voodoo hitch part. So the voodoo hitch is I want to extend as far back to the bank as I can. Uh, especially on throw line and a couple of back splices, it's going to stretch a lot. So you're going to want at least 8 to 10 feet coming off the anchor. Okay, This is just my benchmark. I'm going to keep that taut. I'm going to work back this way. When I'm at about that 8 to 10 foot mark, I'm going to throw a, a, an inline or a directional 8 here. An inline or a directional 8 is taking a bite of rope, throwing it over the top of my hand, and then just tracing out an 8. There's my first, that's the bottom hole of the eight. There's the top of the eight. I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna follow my hand out of the equation. And then I end up with an inline eight. As soon as I have that connection created, I'm gonna take my rope and I'm gonna pass my rope. I'm not gonna put a connector in here. I'm just gonna pass a bite of rope directly through the bite of the eight. Okay. As soon as I have a little bit of that up, I'm gonna grab the tail of this rope I passed through. I'm gonna bring this guy up and I'm gonna size this. So I wanna pull this slack out and get this pretty manually tight. As soon as I see that benchmark right there, I'm gonna create a figure eight on a bike. So we've created a closed loop traveling through uh, basically a mechanical advantage point right here. This is the only place we add another connector. So I take this other carabiner, I clip it in there, I clip it in there, and then the beauty of this hitch is it basically self-assumes or self-secures. So all I gotta do is grab this leg, 
to pull. As I'm pulling, I'm adding tension to this line. Now, you can two-stage this too. So as I'm looking, if I'm pulling here and I'm starting to hit a point, I'm like, ah, that's hard. I can feed with this hand, so I'm gonna shuttle. And I can get even more tension out of this thing. Turn the other direction. Okay, and that's it. You can see, that thing's not going anywhere. I haven't thrown any redundant half inches in. I haven't mulled it off. I haven't done anything back there. It's just set. It's good to leave a person back here so they can continue to tension this if you get some stretch. Um, they can also create the redundancy of going ahead and doing a tie off back here. So you're gonna have a lot of traffic on this guy. So we look down the line, you can see we've got a, we got a nice tension line coming across the lane. Um, and our line actually did end up, the way we set it up, within uh, the length of our boat to the open hole in the ice. So we'll run back up here now and then we'll add in the equation of how to move in your craft when you're on this rope. All right, so before we take off, you wanna work with your partner, this would now be basically the rescue company arriving on scene. They arrive on scene and you've already got this all established for them to gain immediate access to the victim. Now there's other options. You could do two point tethers, three point tethers, four point tethers. Um, it's just more manpower intensive and you're gonna need more guys to set it up. Whereas this can basically be established by one, one rescuer or two rescuers. And that way all your racial resources get on scene and ready to rock. So I want a 10 crew now at this point on this end. I um, mean, Craig and Devin would take a line. Again, it's a throwback. And they're gonna clip into the bow connection. We're using a Tatinga Rick craft here. If I lift that up, you see we've got a, a multi-point anchor system down here, tied into a multi-point anchor connection there. You don't need all that for this application, but that's your connection point right there. It's good that it's on the underside of the craft or your rescue sled or whatever kind of floating platform you're using because especially if we're breaking through ice, you wanna make sure that our poles, they're gonna have a higher vantage point on the bank, are gonna create some lift on the boats or on your rescue sleds so that you're not just plummeting and plowing through the ice. I have a handle to center that I keep with me in my kit, but uh, you may not need this. In a lot of applications, I'll go hand over hand, unless my hands are really, really cold or I'm having a hard time getting grip on the rope. Important thing to move is, don't stagger, don't offset, don't get on the sides. Try and stay neutral when you're using platforms. Get directly under that line and make sure that you can create lift um, on, your, on your forward leading edge. With the rig crash, we go, we go open transom first. Here's when we get to the victim. That's our easiest way to bring the victims in and out, whether we sit and do leg extensions uh, or whether we just do bounce pulls or whether we come in and throw a quick body rig around and then pull them in, okay? That 10 lines is going to be our way out of the hole. As the rescuer, uh, I'm going to lay in here, basically uh, butt down, back up, hands over me, and just like you would be kind of pulling yourself across the zip line, that's all I'm going to do. If I need the handle of center to help me, then I'll throw in the handle of center to help me. <laughs> if you start getting hung up, that's where you can get high create some of that buoyancy to start try, try and start moving yourself across. Now, when I start approaching the hole and I want to pivot or I need to avoid some obstacles, I can bow load the boat and think about it as a hip pivot to lock in on the line with two hands. So I want to swing the boat out this way. I'm going to lock in and I'm going to pivot. You can change the direction or you can bring it all the way back around by throwing your hips the other way. Once you're in position, you now go up to your security of the victim, free throw rope go, enter in, have your secondary restroom, whatever it is, having that line connected to 
the bow of the boat as soon as I have the victim. And I'm in the hole. We now have a floating platform. It's gonna ease rough handling or bumping with the victim coming out of the hole. So all I can do is lean back, get my head taps, and off we go. So not always the solution, uh, but definitely a solution in your arsenal for staggered companies.